Sony's eagerly awaited PlayStation Showcase has come and gone. I found it to be a solid collection of upcoming releases. Sword of the Sea in particular looked nice. However, this wasn't the best showcase for Sony's first-party studios, or a smattering of upcoming exclusives for the PS5. Some are fine with that. Others are probably angry. You can make up your own mind. However, it does raise the question, what are Sony's first-party studios doing? Let's start with the confirmed titles. First is Insomniac Games, which finally showcased gameplay for Marvel Spider-Man 2. Not only did it introduce Kraven as one of the new villains, but also Dr. Kurt Connors in his lizard incarnation, tearing through the East River as Kraven's hunter chased him. The symbiote suit was also revealed, but on Peter Parker, who has some new brutal abilities to go with it. Miles Morales was no slouch, showcasing new gadgets and enhanced Venom Blast powers that can chain lightning. It has a lot to dissect, and we're left with many questions about the story, like the state of Harry Osborn. A release date isn't yet confirmed, but Insomniac said it would share the same soon with the other details like the pre-order date, accessibility features, and more. Haven Studios, founded by Jade Raymond of Watch Dogs and EA Mode of Fame, also showcased its brand new title, Fair Games, coming to PS5 and PC. It's an online heist game with competitive elements. No gameplay was showcased, but the various scenarios of the CG trailer did reinforce the emergent sandbox moments that Haven is going for. Heisters had a grappling hook, which could, well, grapple onto the environment and hoist them up. However, it could also grapple a piece of metal to use as a shield or create a barrier against laser wires. It appears to support three-player teams, but not much else is known. A QR code led to a page that may be for pre-registration for an upcoming closed beta. It's either that or Sony really wants to know which billionaire needs a spanking. Seriously. Firewalk Studios, founded in 2018 by Harold Ryan, former CEO of Bungie, unveiled its new title as well. It's a PvP first-person shooter called Concord, out in 2024 for PS5 and PC. And that's more or less it. Yes, once again, no gameplay was showcased. It was touted as a unique universe of vibrant worlds, and a rich cast of colorful characters. So, maybe a hero shooter? It's too early to say, but its director and executive producer have worked on Destiny, so we'll see. Odd as it sounds, that's really all that was revealed on the first party side. Bungie is owned by Sony and unveiled Marathon, but that's coming to PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC with crossplay and cross save. It's also a PvP extraction shooter, presumably one with live service elements. Again, time will tell, but at least whenever gameplay debuts, it will be closer to the game's release. So, there's that. It's understandable for some to be worried that this is all Sony has in the pipeline from its first-party studios. However, Insider Gaming's Tom Henderson reported that a lot of the games we're waiting on seeing are pretty much ready, and he was unsure why Sony chose to not reveal them. The snitch further chimed in, stating that there are some announcements that weren't revealed at the showcase, and it's unknown why. One of those is a PC port for a AAA title reportedly out in July that would probably answer what Nix is up to, though your guess is as good as ours at what said title could be. Some of the projects we know about that aren't formally announced include Ben Studios' next game. The Days Gone developer is working on a new IP with a whole new world, which builds on the open world system seen in its zombie survival title and incorporates multiplayer. It's planning to reveal the title when the time is right. Sadly, that time wouldn't be at the recent PlayStation Showcase. Fire Sprite, fresh off of releasing Horizon Call of the Mountain with Guerrilla Games, had job listings last year for a AAA narrative-driven horror adventure game. However, later rumors indicated that it's also working on a reboot of Twisted Metal, with a former Destruction All-Star director on board. While Fire Sprite never officially announced it, several job listings emerged last February for a new AAA multiplayer title that aims to break new ground in multiplayer, blending gameplay mechanics in new ways and deeply embedding storytelling elements into a unique universe. The principal designer listing also mentioned mechanics around vehicular and on-foot combat. Even if Twisted Metal is in the works, 
perhaps to coincide with the upcoming show, it seems to be a way off from release. Guerrilla Games released Horizon Forbidden West last year to critical and commercial success, and followed it up with Burning Shores expansion this past April. It also worked on the PlayStation VR title Horizon Call of the Mountain. Given how Forbidden West and Burning Shores ended, we can safely assume Horizon 3 is on the way. For its part, the developer confirmed that it would continue to create epic solo adventures for Aloy. However, it's also working on an online Horizon game, developed by a new internal team and featuring a new cast of characters and a unique stylized look. Subsequent job listings have suggested that it will be open world and feature new machines, though again, it may be a while before any gameplay is showcased. There's been a lot of talk about online titles and live services, so here's some potentially good news for single player fans. Ghosts of Tsushima developer Sucker Punch Productions put up job listings last year for a new project. The encounter designer listed indicated that this was an open world game with a particular focus on melee combat and stealth. That sounds like a sequel to Ghost of Tsushima is in development. Whether it's coming sooner than expected, especially since the first game was released in 2020, remains to be seen. But it would be incredibly hype. Will Ghost of Tsushima Legends, the amazing four-player co-op experience, also return? It probably isn't beyond Sony to already have a live service spin-off based on the same in development, so we'll see. Amid all of Sony's first-party studios, Bluepoint Games appeared to be the most low-key. The Demon's Souls remake developer revealed earlier this year that it was hard at work on their next project, but also that it would showcase it when the time is right. All good things take time. What's particularly interesting is that this project isn't a remake, but original content, according to Sony. A sequel to Bloodborne, as rumored by Xbox Era in October 2021? One could hope, but the mill has run dry on reliable Bloodborne rumors over the years. Little Big Planet developer Media Molecule confirmed that live support for Dreams would end on September 1st, 2023, as it focuses on its exciting new project. The developer has confirmed it's not Dreams 2 or based on the IP. Studio co-founder Mark Healy, who served as the creative director of Dreams, left the studio shortly after the announcement. Another co-founder, Karim Tony, who also served as an art director, also departed the studio earlier this year. While this doesn't mean Media Molecule are in trouble, you have to wonder what it means for the future, especially since ending support for Dreams wasn't an easy decision. Another low-key first-party studio lately has been London Studios, which released VR shooter Blood and Truth back in 2019. It confirmed last October that it was working on a non-VR, online co-op title set in London but with a fantasy twist. Developed on the in-house Soho engine, co-studio head Tara Saunders said it's the studio's most ambitious game to date. While it doesn't use all different bits of peripherals, it is still about taking that DNA of innovation and putting it into any game concept, per Saunders. Regarding the theme, co-studio head Stuart White revealed, Our overarching theme is about bringing fantastical and magical elements and intersecting that with familiar worlds, and you don't get much more familiar to us than London. Again, sounds interesting, but it may be a ways off from release. Astro's Playroom developer Team Asabi was one of the only teams to survive the end of Japan Studio, and now exists as a standalone developer. Last we heard, it's working on a franchise for all ages with global appeal, per PlayStation Studios head Herman Holst. A job listing in July 2021 indicated the studio was hiring for a 3D action title and that the creativity and humor would be a part of it. Again, no formal announcement made, so it's a toss-up when we'll hear about that. Finally, there's Naughty Dog, working on a standalone multiplayer title for The Last of Us. Unfortunately, it seems the developer has run into some issues. The developer revealed it's giving the project more time, while Bloomberg's Jason Schreier said it's being reassessed for quality and long-term viability. The developer team has reportedly been scaled back, with some going to work on other projects, but it's not cancelled. Interestingly, Naughty Dog said it has other games in the works, including a brand new single-player experience. The Last of Us director Neil Druckmann confirmed he was working on a new project last year, while also saying it was too early to discuss. He's open to developing The Last of Us Part 3, 
but that's not exactly set in stone. Yet. There were rumors of an Uncharted reboot, developed by a different studio. A new recruiter was brought on last year to build teams for new games, and the legacy of Uncharted. Sony would subsequently announce a new internal studio in San Diego with PlayStation Studios Visual Art to work with Naughty Dog on a new project in a beloved franchise. A tease for that could be the next Uncharted, that was spotted in a live-action trailer for PS5 in January. But again, nothing official has been announced. There are other first-party studios like Housemark and Santa Monica Studio, but the former has not indicated its next project. The latter released God of War Ragnarok last November, and it may be a long while before its next project is unveiled. Polyphony Digital indicated in February that work has started on the next Gran Turismo, but it can't talk about the same just yet. In the meantime, it continues to pump out content updates for Gran Turismo 7. Given all the projects in development, it remains to be seen if Sony will have more state of plays this year to showcase its other projects. It's not odd to see a publisher hold back announcements to avoid bloating its shows. See Xbox. Sony may also be taking a page out of Nintendo's book and keeping its completed projects under wraps before announcing and releasing them within the same time frame. If nothing else, it could also be a lean year for AAA exclusives on the PS5. Given Sony's recently revealed strategy to have two or more major games yearly, it wouldn't be the biggest surprise. As horrifying as that no doubt sounds for the PlayStation diehard, the company has released several high-profile exclusives since the PS5's launch in November 2020. There's bound to be some downtime in between. Nevertheless, it should still be an interesting year for PS5 players. Final Fantasy XVI is out in June. Marvel Spider-Man 2 is reportedly targeting a September release. Helldivers 2 is later this year. The near future is pretty bright, even if we still need more details on what's coming in 2024 and beyond. Hey, did you know that we at Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.